Joining us now around this table, I'm really pleased to say the outgoing NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg departing the organisation after a decade. Sarah, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for sharing what I believe is your final interview. It in is. The job. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You've been very kind to Bloomberg over the years, and every time we've spoken to you over the last decade, you've always been generous with your time. So thank you. Thank you for that. If I think back at your tenure over the last decade, I can think of two really big wake-up calls for the organisation. One was Trump being elected in 2016 mm. and really putting the foot on the throat of some of the people who were part of this organization to spend more on defense. The other was the invasion of Russia into Ukraine more recently in the last couple of years. As you step back and think about your tenure the last decade, what stood out for you? The most, uh, of course, decisive and, uh, and uh, as I say, important uh, challenge we faced was the Russian full-scale invasion of, uh, of Ukraine. But we have to remember that the war in Ukraine didn't start in 2022. It started in 2014 when Russia went in and took Crimea. And since then, uh, over the last uh, decade, NATO has implemented the biggest reinforcement of collective defense because of Russia's annexation of Crimea. So when the full-scale invasion happened in 20. We were prepared. We had more forces uh, on higher readiness for the first time battle groups in the eastern part of the alliance. So when it happened, uh, the full-scale invasion, we were able to step up our support for Ukraine and increase our military presence uh, in, uh, in the eastern part of the alliance. So, Ukraine has been there throughout my tenure, uh, but it has gotten worse. Let's talk about the potential path forward for Ukraine, <clears throat> especially given the fact that we have this U.S. election looming over the crisis. Donald Trump was talking yesterday about Zelensky, saying that he was making nasty aspersions about him. That had to do with this New Yorker article, I'm sure you've seen, but what he said about J.D. Vance, also the fact that he went to Pennsylvania, which is a swing state in this country. Do you think Zelensky miscalculated this political situation right now in the United States? I'm convinced that President Zelensky is ready to work with uh, whoever is uh, elected as uh, president uh, in, in the United States. And I also know that uh, President Zelensky worked with President Trump when he was uh, president of the United States. And also that during that time, actually, the United States uh, increased its uh, military support to Ukraine. Uh, it uh, was during the Trump administration that the decision to um, provide lead-laid javelins uh, to, uh, to Ukraine was taken. So it's not for me and it's not for President Zelensky to have any opinion uh, about who uh, the American people should elect, but we need to work with whoever is elected to ensure uh, continued support for Ukraine. I guess I'm confused because there's been a change of attitude from President Zelensky. He sat down with me in July and basically said he wanted to get into a room with Trump. He wanted to see the plan Trump had when he says, I have a path to victory. And now he comes here and he's kind of poking the bear, what he says about his running mate. And the fact of the matter is Trump is not going to be meeting him along the sidelines mm -hmm. of the UN General Assembly. And that probably goes back to what Zelensky has said about him. But you know, it's not for me as Secretary General of NATO to try to, uh, to facilitate a meeting between uh, President Zelensky and, and, and uh, Donald Trump. Uh, what, uh, what I can do is to uh, convey to, uh, to, the, to the United States, to all NATO allies, that it is important that we continue to support uh, Ukraine. Because this is uh, not only about Ukraine, it's also about our own security. If we allow President Putin to win in Ukraine, it will be a tragedy for the Ukrainians, but also dangerous for us. Because then the message to President Trump is that when he uses military force, he gets what he, uh, to, to President uh, Putin, is that when he uses military force, he gets what he wants. And, uh, and, uh, and that will also be followed very closely in China. Uh, so, so this is not only about Europe, but also about uh, whether we should allow authoritarian leaders there's uh, around the world to use military force to achieve what they want. What I've been hearing from some of my sources in the Trump administration is that they want to do similar to what Trump did in the first round, which was push NATO alliance, <clears throat> push the alliance to have more of a collective defense spending. Basically, now they would push for 3%. How would you, um, you know, your advice to the incoming Secretary General on how to deal with that? Well, First of all, I think we need to recognize the enormous progress European allies have made, uh, have made uh, because uh, in, in back in 2014, um, uh, only three uh, allies met the guideline spending 2% of GDP on defense. Uh, this year, 23 allies uh, are spending 2% or more. 
Uh, but you also made it clear that 2% is not enough. So the good news is that we have met the 2% uh, uh, target, but we need to do even uh, more. Uh, 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 because um, uh, we live in a more dangerous world, and therefore we agreed uh, at our last summit um, that 2% uh, is a minimum. Uh, it's not a ceiling, it's a floor. Uh, and we also have agreed in NATO new defense plans, which require specific capabilities, forces, readiness. And for allies to provide those forces we have agreed that they should provide, they have to spend uh, significantly more than 2%. Whether that's 25 or 3 I will not give you a exact number, but it's significantly more than 2 Do you think that NATO is significantly stronger or significantly weaker than it was when you took the office? There's no doubt that NATO is significantly stronger. Uh, we are spending much more on uh, defense. Uh, we have many more troops on high readiness. We have uh, more high-end capabilities. We have battle-ready troops in the Eastern part of the alliance. But the challenge is that the world is more dangerous. So the success of NATO is that when the world changes, we change, and that's exactly what we have seen. The issue is that NATO <coughs> members may not agree on where the dangers are and exactly how to deal with them. How do you see NATO facing off with certain economic and potential military threats from, say, China? and other countries where it's a little more complicated in terms of the members? Well, we are 32 allies. And of course, sometimes it takes time to make 32 allies representing 50% uh, of the world's GDP, 50% of the world's military might to agree. Uh, but the good news is that on, for instance, China, we have come a very long way. Not so many years ago, NATO didn't have any unified policy on China. Now we have a very clear position that China matters for our security, that uh, China cannot continue uh, to enable Russia's war aggression against uh, uh, Ukraine uh, without consequences for its interest and, uh, and reputation. And allies have also agreed that we need to work more closely with our partners in the Indo-Pacific, Japan, and South Korea, Australia, as a response to what we see China is doing. We could talk to you all day, but we're running out of time, so I have to squeeze this in. And it's rather selfish. Do you know a guy that might be able to help us set up the show, take it on the road to the Munich Security Conference anytime soon? <laughs> Do you know someone we yeah. might be able to call? But, you know, uh, the Munich Security Conference is a very good platform to discuss security <laughs> issues, uh, but I will not uh, give you a specific name for okay. who can help with that. I'll get in touch in a number of weeks' time, and hopefully <laughs> maybe that will change. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything over the last decade. We appreciate it. We Thank really you. do. Thank you. The NATO Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, there.